So if you're a videographer, a video editor, if you're in the video production game, you know that hard drives are the backbone of your system. And whether it's these little portable drives, portable SSDs, or RAID systems, or what's actually inside of your computer, inside of your laptop, that's where the footage lives because we're not on tape anymore. For the most part, we're not really on film anymore. It's all on hard drives, whether they're spinning disks or SSDs. And I've got a little bit of a situation going on here because I've got one RAID system, two RAID systems, and then I've got a whole stack here of these portable drives that are like working drives, backup drives, and just drives that ended up on my desk. So I've got here two new drives from Western Digital, which is hopefully going to help me reconcile a little bit of my storage solution and also give me more storage in a smaller footprint and it's going to hopefully be a little bit faster. So this is where things start, your standard external hard drive that is still a rotating hard drive. These are kind of your basic storage. They're not super, super fast. And you know, if you're editing on a plane, you're editing on the go, if they drop, they're really liable to get damaged, but they're not very expensive. I use these most of the time as backups. One of these is for Time Machine, always backing up my MacBook. And then the rest of these are great for field backups. These are a cheap way to add storage to your system, but I don't recommend using these as your main drives to be editing off of. For editing off of hard drives, these are the kind of drives that I recommend Recommend. these are external SSDs. So these are solid state drives. There's no rotating parts, which means that they are just a little bit more durable than your standard rotating drive. And it also means that you're looking at read and write speeds that are significantly faster. So that means everything from copying files to and from your hard drive to and from your SD card, that's gonna be faster as well as you're gonna have better sustained read and write speeds while you're editing. When you're working with files with higher bit rates, you're going to need more consistent throughput from your external hard drives. So all of these are USB-C connectors, USB 3.1, which is gonna give you that consistent throughput for editing high quality footage. So these two big RAID arrays serve two different purposes right now in my workflow. This one is my working drive as well as an archive for most of the footage for my day job. This thing has four eight terabyte hard drives in it and it's running in RAID 5, which means that one of the drives is a parity drive. So I've really got 24 terabytes to work with on this one. Now this enclosure is something that I put together myself. I bought the enclosure and then I bought the four four terabyte drives that are inside. And they're actually four other bays which are empty and they're gonna stay empty because this is what I'm replacing. This is my personal archive. So this has all of my footage dating back to 2014, 2015. And all of this is in RAID 5, so that gives me 12 terabytes actually to work with out of the 16 that are in there. And that is going to be replaced by a new system, which is gonna be RAID 1 with each of these hard drives, which I'm going to actually take out of their enclosures. I'm gonna shuck them. We're gonna work through that. So I'm replacing that with these two hard drives. I'm gonna put them into a new enclosure and that will become my big master archive of all my old footage. So part one of the transfer starts now. I'm doing this kind of piece by piece to limit just like any errors that happen. This old RAID is pretty slow, so this might take like two days. So day two of copying commences. I'm looking at about, it's like less than two gigs a minute for transfers. Day four. So was traveling for a couple days, so now we're on to like day seven, day eight of copying. Interestingly enough, switched out the cable uh, that was connecting the new NAS to my laptop. I switched it out from well, what I thought was a Thunderbolt 3 cable, like it's labeled Thunderbolt 3. I just switched it out to another USB-C that I think is, is USB-C 3.1 compatible cable. And I'm seeing like triple speeds, like way, 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 way better. So hopefully we can make big progress today and wrap this up. And then I got to figure out what the, what the whole deal is with the cable situation, but that's for another day. Okay, so it's been just about 10 days since I started this whole project. Everything is pretty much wrapping up. I've got my little two bay enclosure that now has a backup of all of my data, everything from 2010 until now. And then I've got um, these little drives here that I pulled out of my enclosure, a bunch of these four terabyte drives that I'm working on turning into what I'm gonna call cold storage. These are drives that are just gonna sit 
and have an additional backup and they're actually gonna be in a different place from where the little two bay enclosure is so that I'm safe, like floods, hurricanes, fires, that kind of stuff. Hope that never happens, but I've got these extra drives just in case. I've got all the master files in the cloud, all my final exports, and I've got a whole bunch of raw footage that's already in the cloud. And so then I've got three different places. So I've got a good amount of redundancy because of course with backups, the three, two, one system is always in effect. Having three copies of your essential data and you want it to be in two different places with one of those places being off-site. Now, I know that mechanical drives are not the best long-term cold storage setup. If you're looking for something that is more permanent, that is a solution called LTO tape backups. And I know that that is the right way to do it. I'm not quite at the level in terms of the importance of my footage and the amount of footage that that really makes sense for me. Footage, I always try to keep multiple copies of footage and editing and working files around just so that should something happen in the middle of a project, you want to be able to continue working and you don't wanna be losing your work while you're in the middle of a project. And then once the project is complete, it's important to keep everything backed up, keep everything saved that you could ever possibly need again. Now you might not think like, hey, I need to save every single scrap of footage. I'm kind of getting away a little bit from that, even as I've been looking at my archives and all that kind of stuff. There's just stuff that I have that it's like, I could probably trim it down, especially like just get rid of the unusable, the outtakes, the stuff that you deleted at first. You can use Premiere's project manager actually to just take all the clips that you ended up using, move those into a new folder, and then you could delete everything else. So those are all options. Now, I will close this video with, I'm not a leading professional in the world of storing video files and backing up video files. I'm still at a stage in my career where the solutions that I am building and using are very much DIY. I don't have infrastructure around me. I'm not working on big teams of editors doing shared storage, that kind of stuff. And so I'm just trying to make do the best that I can with what I have. And I'm also trying to improve just a little bit upon like the generic, oh, what should you edit on? You should get a NAS. Um, that's what a lot of people say out there on the internet. And sure, that's that's okay, that's one solution, but that doesn't make sense for my workflow and the amount that I travel and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm trying to complicate things just a little bit beyond just having a single NAS where everything lives and maybe having that in RAID 5 or whatever, but I am not a shared storage professional. I am not like just an IT wizard. This is just me making sense of my needs and trying to devise a solution that is both cost effective, but it also covers me and keeps my footage safe. All right, Drew, do your magic.